Good morning. And welcome to the United Methodist Church of Westchester. It's great to have you all with us today, especially for all our guests with us today. We hope you find Christ alive here among us and the people beside you very friendly, very warm and welcoming towards you. There are a few announcements I'd like to highlight this morning. I'm Truman Brooks, the senior pastor here, and all of you are welcome following the service to come into the gathering area, enjoy some coffee and some donuts. And for our first time guests, we have uh, visitor gifts for all of our first time guests. So please make sure you stop by uh, the welcome desk. A uh, few of the announcements that I really need to highlight, most are on the front page in the box there. There is a Jazz Vesper service tonight. It's being offered over at Willistown United Methodist Church. It's at 7 o'clock. They are usually really spectacular. Um, there's a free will offering. It is a worship service. There will be a, a brief homily and some prayer and uh, some wonderful jazz. So if you have the time tonight, go on over to Willistown United Methodist Church. Notice that next week is our annual Palm Sunday Bake Sale for our United Methodist women. Uh, all the profits go towards um, all the profits go towards mission projects, both uh, locally, regionally, nationally, and globally. So uh, please come and get ready to purchase a whole lot of uh, baked items for your Easter Sunday. Uh, our deadline is this coming Wednesday, I guess that is, for ordering Easter flowers. So please make sure you jump on that. And you can also give a donation towards the Mompasa project that is ongoing. And now we're working with the Pediatric Eye Care Clinic on a project with that. Our labyrinth is going to be available starting next Sunday between the two worship services. So um, you are welcome to use it any time in the weeks to come. There's a little write-up on the labyrinth and how it'll be working uh, on the back cover of the bulletin today. It's kind of a wonderful, prayerful, meditative exercise that uh, if you've never done before, you really should kind of jump in. There'll be directions for you how to use it when you get there, and uh, I, I think you'll grow closer to God through the process. I know I have whenever I use it. Um, notice that our Easter egg hunt is coming up this coming Saturday, so make sure you're here with your children. We need to have you register, so you can register here in the gathering area, or just go online to our website. You can register there as well. This is a great opportunity to invite children from the neighborhood to our church, so please bring them on board. Our Holy Week schedule is also on the back of the service here. And um, just one more thing. Today is the last Sunday for Fred and Annette Crotchfeld here. Fred and Annette, wave your hand, okay? They have been members here 32 years. They have done so many things in the course of that time. And um, Fred especially has been president of our church council, held many other uh, posts along the way, Stephen minister, visitation. Uh, how many of you have received a visit from Fred sometime when you were in the hospital or convalescing? A whole bunch of you. Absolutely, absolutely. We're definitely going to miss you. They're moving to Oxford, Southern Chester County, so they're not that too far away, but they're just far away enough. So uh, we'll still see them a little bit now and then, but um, let's have a, a quick prayer for Fred and Annette. And following the service, go over and say thank you for all the years they've been among us. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for 32 years of life, love, fellowship, growth, and ministry through and with Fred and Annette. We ask that you would bless them along their way into their next stage of their life and their next stage of ministry there in Southern Chester County. And um, we pray, O oh God, for our church, that though they could never be replaced, uh, many workers would come and pick up all that they have done over the years, that we could be a place where Christ shines for generations to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's prepare to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth.
Like Zacchaeus, we came this morning to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Don't pass us by today, O oh God. Speak and let us hear. Come and make yourself at home in our hearts and lives, Lord Jesus. Bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Come now before God, confessing our sins and shortcomings, knowing that God is always merciful if we turn to him. We will pray first together and then on our own in silence. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love us, but we confess we do not fully love you. You call, but we do not always listen. We often walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We often condone evil, hatred, oppression, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin, so that as you move toward us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, receive forgiveness, and live lives worthy of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, amen. Hear these words of assurance. God has already created a clean heart in us. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven and new, made new in God's love. 
And as new creatures of Christ, please stand and share the peace of Christ with each other. And now hear the prayer of illumination. Jesus, the night before you were crucified, you prayed for us to be as one, as you and the Father are one. How grieved you must be to see us quarreling amongst ourselves. Help us to listen to your words of scripture with open minds and warm hearts and grow in us that desire to be as one. Amen. Good morning. The scripture for this morning is Luke 6, 27 to 36. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those that curse you, pray for those that abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to anyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those that love them. If you do good to those that do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. But love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So ends this reading of the scriptures. Now this morning we get to take part in three baptisms, so invite you to turn to page 39 in your hymnals, and could we have Henry and Leo and Tyler and their parents come right on up here in front of the baptismal font. Okay, and there's Vanessa, so it's time, she's right there for the water. Okay. Hey guys, good morning, good morning. That works. Come on over. Good morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Okay. The Wonderlands, go first. Okay. We present. We present Thomas, or Henry Thomas Wonderland, <laughs> and the Wonderland for baptism. Very good. Okay, go ahead. We present Tyler George Foster. 
on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Will you nurture Henry and Leo, and will you nurture Tyler in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. I will. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Henry and Leo and Tyler now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround them with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Vanessa, come on through. Okay. She might need a little help. Nope. This is good. She practiced it. Right up here. Okay. It's coming. Oh, that's okay. Just keep pouring it out. She is good. Okay, just keep going. A bit more. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Vanessa. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <laughs> Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of <laughs> Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their life, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Okay. I get Henry first. Here we go. Who oh, could I have him so he's like over the sun? Henry, can I? Uh oh. You okay? Okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you hold it? That's a good idea. Hey, Judy, why don't you come on up? <laughs> Henry, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And could we all just kind of lay a hand on Henry here and reach on in there, Judy? The Holy Spirit worked within you, Henry, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You're going to get yours early. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay. So you think you want to walk them up and down the aisle? Okay. You, you might want to walk with her. Oh, I, I think. Yeah, maybe it'll work. Okay. We have Leo ready to go? Okay, Leo. Here we go, buddy. You want to sit up, don't you? Hey, big guy. You ready? Oh. There we go. Leo. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Oh. <laughs> and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's all reach in here. The Holy Spirit work within you, Leo. That being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, buddy. Here we go. Alan's coming your way. Yeah, he likes sitting up a little bit, I think. <laughs> oh, they're going to start walking now. That's cool. Is that your grandma? All right. Tyler, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, would you all like to gather in and lay a hand on Tyler? All right? All right. The Holy Spirit work within you, Tyler, that being born of water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Very good. Welcome on up and down, down. Brothers and sisters of the household of grace, I present unto you uh, three new little brothers and sisters in Christ. Actually, all brothers in Christ. <laughs> wow. How about that? Henry and Leo and Tyler. Let us welcome them. see here. There we go. <laughs> now we'd like to give to both families uh, these shells. And I think you already have one there for Henry. This is one for Leo too. I guess I have And this is there. one uh -huh. for uh, the Clawson family. There we so go. Fresh. Thank you. And we invite you every year on this date to bring these shells out on uh, October the 18th and talk with your children about baptism. Remind them that Christ has touched their life and the light of Christ will never go out. will always keep knocking on their door until the day they're welcomed home to him. Let's have a word of prayer together for these families. Dear God, you are so good to us. We thank you for blessings of generation after generation, for healthy children, for loving parents, for loving grandparents and aunts and uncles. We thank you for the gift of your church, the body of Christ, nurturing us all into your way. Bless these families, that they may be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you very much, guys. You. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. I would like to invite the children yeah, to come down Good now job. for the message for growing Christians. And uh, we have three new babies for the uh, small children for the uh, message. And we invite their parents to bring them up if they would like to. Um, the friendship folders will be passed out right now. And please, if you are visiting us today, please let us know that you are here by filling out one of the blue sheets. If you are a member, please fill out the white sheets. And if you have anything to say to us, there's a couple of lines there so uh, you can send us a message. There are also prayer cards in the friendship folders. So if you have a prayer concern, please fill that out and put it in the offering plate or give it to a member of the pastoral staff so that we can pray for your need this week. 
If you're worshiping with us via the live stream, please um, go to the website if you have a prayer request and there's a place there to make it. Thank you. Good morning, boys. Go 
The second scripture today comes also from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead 
and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. seated. And uh, I'm going to ask maybe we could just have a little show of applause, a little clap for Vanessa. It was her first Sunday working with a baptism over here. She was a little nervous. Yeah. Great job, Vanessa. Nobody drowned. Good job with that. <laughs> it has been a fun Lent, hasn't it? When's the last time you heard that in a Christian church? It's been a fun, fun Lent, but it really has. For the past several weeks, we have been focusing on 40 Days of Kindness. We've been studying a book by a local Christian author, doing creative acts of kindness every day, recording them in kindness journals, looking at stories of kindness throughout the Bible. Now, stay there a second. Just stay right up there a second. Here we go. Um, and basically, this has been a really great Lenten experience. And today, we kind of wrap that series up. But really, please, 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 don't let this be where the kindness ends. Daily kindness has to continue. This angry, violent, bullying world desperately needs people of faith to model what mercy is, to do the work of reconciliation, to share the true, real, life-changing love of Jesus Christ. If you don't do it, if we don't do it, sin wins and brokenness remains. Now, each week we try to do some, something fun to kind of reinforce this whole kindness theme. And today the fun involves chocolates, okay? Fun and tasty. That's not too bad. And so I'm going to ask the ushers in a minute to pass among you these baskets. And I'm going to ask you to pick up two pieces of chocolate. No more than two because we have a second service and I do not want those people to be mad because they only have half the chocolate they need. Two pieces of chocolate. One is for you to eat. One is for you to give away. One is for you to eat, one is for you to give away. Go ahead, you can start passing them. Just grab it, two pieces of chocolate, put them in your pocket. I'm not going to be like paying attention if you eat one piece while doing the sermon. I'm not going to be watching. I just assume you not do it, but if you can, you know, do what you have to do. Two pieces of chocolate. Each chocolate has a tiny positive 
message on it, a little stamp on there that we put on from the church office. Give that piece of chocolate, that extra piece, to someone who really needs it. Maybe leave it on the table today if you're going out to lunch so that somebody on the wait staff, okay, can find it and can enjoy it. A little sweet act of kindness, especially an anonymous act of kindness can change the day of a person. Maybe that person will show kindness to another and on and on multiplying your simple act of kindness, paying it forward, putting smiles on people's faces, changing the world in one small way for good. Make no mistake about it. The way we act can change the world for good. We can change the world for good. You can make a difference in people's attitudes, which can change their behavior. A famous preacher once said, when people tell me that human nature cannot be changed, I am moved to reply that in light of my experience, human nature may well be the only thing that can be changed. We cannot change the course of the moon or the sun. We cannot change the laws of the physical world. We cannot change the movement and flow of the oceans. We cannot change the stars in the sky and the courses they move in. But the Bible tells us lives can be changed. The Bible pulsates with pages of testimonies of the lives and purposes and events and habits which have been changed because God has moved in a mighty way in the world. Abraham, as an older man, was sent to start a whole new religion of people in a whole nother nation. Moses, his life was changed by a burning bush. Mary, this little girl in a backwoods town became the mother of Jesus and she she got to blurt out the words of the beautiful Magnificat revolutionary words Peter he would be broken by his act of denial and he would be healed back up by the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Saul he would go from being the greatest persecutor of the church to the greatest missionary and theologian of the early church lives can be changed uh, lives can be transformed because of Jesus Christ sent into the world so that the world could be saved, which means the world could be changed. It could be transformed. It could be made whole and healthy. And that kindness of Jesus changed lives again and again and again throughout his journey on this earth. People changed for good when they came to know this Jesus, like in today's gospel lesson. We owe Luke a great debt for this story, by the way, because Luke's the only gospel that records the story of Zacchaeus. He told this dramatic story, and he basically showed us what the mission of Jesus was through this story, and in turn, what the mission of us, the church, has to be about. The event happened while Jesus was passing through Jericho, the city of Palms, uh, and Luke writes, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. That one sentence told us pretty much his whole story. Here's the background. Nothing in first century Judea was quite as hated and despised as was the Roman tax. People hated to pay that tax. It not only reminded Jews that they were subjugated people under the, the pressure of the Romans, but it also was a deep theological affront to the Jew. There was only one king, and that king was not Caesar. Paying tribute to an earthly non-Jewish monarch was something that the Hebrews had opposed throughout their long history. But there was more. The dirty work of collecting the taxes was not left to the Romans themselves but to collaborating brother and sister Jews. Much of the money that they collected off the backs of their fellow countrymen stayed with them, okay? They kept money in their pockets. We're told that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. This is the only time in the New Testament that we hear that term, chief tax collector. It must have meant that he had many tax collectors working for him. He was like over a district. Uh, Zacchaeus may have been short in stature, but he had wealth. And wealth means power in his day and every day. So in a manner of speaking, people looked up to him. Zacchaeus was the little man with the big nasty reputation. He was not just very well to do. The Bible says he was rich. He was completely filthy rich. A rich man. Now what you don't see in today's gospel lesson is the verses that went before it. And in the verses that went before it, Jesus had just spoken to a rich man uh, in the very story right before this in chapter 18, right before he went on this journey through Jericho, a rich young ruler. Remember what he said to him? The rich young ruler is a righteous man, we're told. He kept most of the laws uh, of his people. He is beloved by the people of his town. And he had a question for Jesus. What do I have to do to inherit eternal life, to be saved? Jesus answered the rich young ruler, you know the commandments, don't murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honor your father and mother, etc., etc. The rich young ruler must have smiled at that. 
because he responded, I've kept all these things since my youth. It's like he acknowledged, okay, I'm going to get in because I did all the right things I'm supposed to do. His deeds made it so. But Jesus wasn't finished. He said, not so fast. There's still one thing lacking. Sell all that stuff that you have and give the money to the poor that need it so badly, and you're going to have treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. A smile must have left his face because he was very, very rich, and there was just no way he was going to give up all of that wealth, not even for his own salvation. Jesus reflected upon his departure how hard it's going to be for those with wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the crowd observed all this. And they heard this story. They were scandalized by Jesus' words and by this, this ruler's departure in sadness. They knew the young man. They knew he was a good guy, upright and honest. They knew he would be a benefactor of the town, and he had been. If this man can't be saved, they said to Jesus, then who can be? Who can be saved? And then we get this story of another rich man, a not good rich man, a filthy rich man. Who can be saved? Luke's answer is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus can be saved. Sinners can be saved. Lying, cheating people can be saved. People that are broken by the pain of this world can be saved. You can be saved. Just acknowledge that you need to be saved. That's all it means. Just accept the kindness that God has offered to you today. Jesus offers to come into your life, come into your home, and talk with you, just like he did with Zacchaeus. Jesus offers to show you a better way of life, remind you that you are a child of God too, that you can have a whole new set of friends and a whole new family that, whose lives have been changed by him who will show kindness to you each and every day. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save those who are lost. Luke 19.10. The whole world is lost. We are surrounded with Zacchaeuses. And they don't have a clue who God is. They just know down deep that they're looking for something. God is a mystery to them. Have you noticed that? I've been told again and again, and I've experienced it myself, and any pastor has probably experienced this. In the last 10 years in America, people don't know God. People are slipping away from church. People are becoming more and more secular. They know God as a mystery if they bother to try to know God at all. The fact is, there's nothing new under the sun. God has always been a mystery to human beings. Since the fall of humanity, we don't understand God completely. We are afraid of God. We're angry with God sometimes. But down deep, we all have always known that we need God. Jesus was sent so we could begin to understand that mystery. The best way, the clearest way we can know this mysterious God is by rubbing elbows with Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We come to know this holy, mysterious, loving God through him, through his teachings, through his example, through his self-sacrificing love on the cross, and through his revolutionary resurrection. Now, Jesus doesn't walk the earth anymore. The only way people can know this mysterious God that we follow is through those who follow Jesus. It's through us, through you, and through me. We are his ambassadors, we're told in the New Testament. You may be the only glimpse of Jesus your neighbor ever gets. Do you ever think about that? You might be it. So share the kindness you know. It will uh, bring a point of, uh, it will point a broken world back to him. Be as merciful as your father has been merciful to you. Live the great requirement in Micah 6, to do justice, share loving kindness, and walk humbly with God. It will bring points of light into a dark world. As John Wesley put it, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. We do this good because Jesus did good. And Jesus is slow, God is slowly perfecting us, making us more like Jesus, like him. Through Christ, we too are children of the king. There's an old saying that goes way back to Ignatius of Antioch in the first century. And the saying is this, where Christ is, there is the church. Where Christ is, there is the church. Not where the church is, there is Christ among us. Where Christ is, there is the church. Uh, notice that. Christ is out there. Okay. As you share your acts of kindness, you will find him. 
That's the main reason we want to keep sharing acts of kindness. So you can find Jesus once again, okay? Christ is in safe harbor and in Salvation Army. Whenever we're serving up those meals to the hungry in the area, Christ is in the faces of the Good Works families whose homes you repair. Christ is in the Chester County prison when we get to go visit. In Philadelphia, as you go on a mission this summer, in the barrios around our community, wherever there are hungry, thirsty, rejected, imprisoned people, Christ is there. He's at the dinner table of a family who's having a hard time making ends meet. He's with the mother who's the victim of domestic violence. He's with frightened homeless people on their first night in the shelter. He's even with a tax collector sitting up in a sycamore tree. If we want to be with him, those are the places we have to go where we're likely to find him. If you want to truly, deeply worship him, show kindness to the ones he loved, the ones who need it the most. Let us pray. And actually, as we go into our time of prayer, please this week once again keep Jim Holton in our prayers. Uh, for those of you who are guests, he is a dear saint of our church who over two years ago now had a double lung replacement, and he's been in the hospital again and again and again and again and again ever since. And once again, he spent a week up there in Willow Grove, and uh, we got a message this morning that he developed pneumonia again. He's going to Abington Hospital and then going back to the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. So please pray once again for Jim and for Ann. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray first for ourselves. We pray that you would come once again into our hearts, renew us, give us the excitement of the faith once more, that we can go out and share kindness fourfold with all those around us. Help us to share your light, but first, fill us with your light so that we have something to share. We pray for all those on our prayer list and on our long-term prayer list today. We ask, O oh God, you would come and send many angels along their way to bring them kindness and mercy and respect and love. For all those, O oh God, who are, on our, um, who are having health problems, strengthen, heal, make whole. For all of those who are going through times of transition, we pray, O oh God, you would give your guidance and direction. For those in the military, watch over them. Keep them safe and let them know who it is that's keeping them safe. For all those who are mourning a loss today, O oh God, bring their world back together day after day. Reconstitute them and uh, help them be thankful for the good memories they've had. And once again, O oh God, we pray for our community that you would put a hunger and thirst for the mystery in the hearts of all the people around us, and then send us out to share what we know of this God that has touched our lives through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, and who we share together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's joyfully bring before the Lord our God our morning gifts and offerings.
every generous act of giving, like every perfect gift, is from above. Let us give out of gratitude. Let us give out of love. Rejoice that quietly and faithfully we are able to help one another. In Jesus' name, amen. blessings of God the Creator rest upon you. May the redeeming work of Jesus Christ renew your spirits. May, May the, the comfort and strength, strength of the Holy Spirit lead us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God, this week and always. Amen. Go in peace.